Good morning, ladies. Laura Gabriel here for day two of the Morning Miracles Challenge. Today, before we start our day, we're going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a whole lot of this so that we can pray strategically about our focus. And our focus is today's topic to form a special prayer strategy based upon the framework we learn from Priscilla Shire's book, Fervent. So today, Nisi Morris Foster, one of our leaders here, is going to read something scary. <laughs> well, it's not that scary because we know greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. But we're hearing what the enemy might be doing to try to disrupt your focus. I would say, especially in your morning time, because I know the enemy knows that the way we calibrate our heart, mind, soul, and strength um, in the morning time sets the tone for the rest of the day. So if you've been having trouble focusing yourself on the things of the Lord in the morning time, maybe you've been praying in bed, but then just falling back asleep instead of setting about your day, this is for you. So let's hear what Nisi has to read which is found on page 39 of the fervent book by Priscilla Shire. If I were your enemy, i disguise myself and manipulate your perspectives so that you focus on the wrong culprit, your husband, your friend, your hurt, your finances, anything or anyone except me. Because when you zero in on the most convenient obvious places to strike back against your problems, you get the impression you're fighting for something, even though all you're really doing is just fighting for nothing. Thank you so much, Nisi. Yes, the enemy disguises himself and manipulates our perspective, so we end up focusing on the wrong culprit directing our weapons at the wrong enemy. That is found from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And as we get dive into today's material from the fervent book, I highlighted the scripture Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. You've heard this a few times already in our time together, but for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Priscilla says that focus protects your goals and dreams from being stolen by compromise. And a little bit of making these mistakes or caving in to our carnal desires or fleshly desires, it, it builds up over time. These become lasting habits. So if you've been pressing the snooze button, for example, there's things that you can be doing instead to intentionally spend your days and your hours that the Lord has given you in a way that will honor him. Ask God to pull back the curtain on what's been going wrong with your focus and refocus your energy on the enemy. That's right, we're actually asking the Lord himself to refocus your energy. So you're not asking yourself to do it. I am going to be reading here on page 51. So if you wanna turn with me there, I want to read the top paragraph, which says, "God, ask God to help you pull back the curtain today and every single day. So you can see when the devil is behind the argument, the frustration, the anger, the discord, the falsehood, the insecurity, the fear, ask him to help you take your attention and emotional energy off the people and circumstances where you've been directing them up till now and refocus them. Let verses like these be your guide as you write. And Priscilla lists these verses to use in the yes part of your pray method prayer. So in every pr prayer you do at the end, there's a yes, Y is for yes. And that means you're actually deriving something from scripture to assert and agree with the Lord. 
So she pulls out scriptures and you can find them inside of each day of our 10 days, right on the bottom, pardon my notes, but along the bottom it says for further reading. And those are all the scriptures that she has listed in there. It's a little bit convenient, that was our hope. So she wants to help us remember to pray God's word when she focuses on that. She says, know that your spiritual, know what your spiritual armor is, which is, a, which is found in Ephesians 6. And the thing that ties it all together is prayer. So remember that God's will is big. You don't have to live distracted. Make sure you're putting on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit and be praying at all times. Priscilla breaks down each piece of the armor on pages 46 through 47 in the book. And I think I had another reading that I wanted to do for you on page 48. So let me turn there. Yes. And again, the one weapon that ties this whole ensemble together, the one that activates and infuses our armor with the power of God himself is prayer. Prayer. Pray at all times in the spirit, Paul said, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. The original word translated at all times in this verse is kairos, which refers to specific times, precise occasions, and particular events. In spiritual warfare, as we detect enemy activity and deploy the various pieces of armor, our prayers need to be fervent and specific, strategic and personal, tied to the specific needs arising at that specific occasion. Oh my goodness. It's hard to stop reading from this because it's so good. If you don't have a copy of this book, please get one. <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, I could read and read, but basically, sister, I want you to know that these prayers matter. Don't not pray. Does that make sense? I'm trying to say pray. Don't just write down the prayers in your journal, pray them to the Lord. Don't just write the prayers down and share them with your team members. And if you choose to do so, we're not asking you to share your prayers publicly, but um, make sure you're praying your prayers to God. He is the, those are the ears that need to hear you. Those are the only ears that can do anything with those prayers. Okay, sister. So pray for your focus. And um, you might not even realize just how off your focus may have been. And we're going to get into some more material tomorrow about identity. And it's going to be so, so, so good. So I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. If you're on team YouTube, I know you can't share a picture from your morning time that shows that you completed at least one of the steps of your God first morning routine, but you can share something about your morning. So tell us how it went. Use your words. <laughs> That's what I say to my, my little kids all the time. Use your words. <laughs> so um, sister, use your words. Encourage one another to focus correctly on spiritual things and less emphasis on the temporal world around us. All right, sister, I really enjoyed this time with you and I hope to see you tomorrow for day three of the Morning Miracles Challenge. This is Laura Gabriel, signing off.